There we go. Oh, thank you. There's some inside, Mrs. Summers. You take a seat while I unload the baggage. Thank you. Would you be Rose Beckett? Why, yes, I am. Oh, good. I'm Horse Cartwright. I'm Ben Cartwright's son. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you. Glad to meet you. Uh, that shotgun out there referred to you as Mrs. Fuller. That sort of threw me for a minute. Oh, well, well I'm Rose. <laughs> and this is my daughter, Bluebird. Oh, howdy. Uh, could, couldn't your father come? No, ma'am. He sort of deputized me. But he'll be back at the ranch by the time we get there. Oh, it'll be good to see him. Yeah. Well, can we uh, get your bags and go? Well, I'd like to send a telegram before we go. Uh, we only have two bags. Bluebird knows which ones they are. She could show you. Oh, fine. Come on, Bluebird. My, what a pretty name you've got, such a little girl. I I'd like to send a telegram, please. All righty. Traffic's a little heavy here today, but we'll get it through for you. Okay. Where's it going? Uh, to Mr. Mosner. M-O-S-N-A-R, Fort Baker, Nevada. Just say... Arrive safe and well. And how do we sign it? Love, Katie. All right. As soon as this line comes open, we'll send it right off. Mr. Lescom, he one of that ransom gang? I ain't heard anybody ask who you are, friend. Got the message. She's at the Ponderosa. Is that McLeod? Yes, sir. She's here. And I was holding your mother on my knee just the way I'm holding you on my knee now. She was just a little girl, too. She was six years old. I'm almost seven. Oh, well, I think your mother was exactly six, and she looked at me with great big tears in her eyes, and I said, you're not afraid of me, are you, Rosie? And she didn't answer. She was so shy. And then Uncle Ben made a funny face, and I started to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go in the other room, give Pop yeah. Singh a chance? I'll help Pop Singh. No, 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 no,
I'm six going on seven, Mr. Cartwright. All right, you come with me, but you don't have to call me Mr. Cartwright. You can call me Jamie. Pretty little girl, isn't she? Yeah. Mother's pretty, too. Yes, she is. Yeah. There's one thing that puzzles me about it. Only one. Yeah. If she's on her way out to California to live with relatives. Oh, wait a minute. The letter said she was on her way west. Uh, well, whatever. But to live with relatives. And that's what puzzles me. I mean, they ain't nobody mentioned a Mr. Summers yet. Well, I imagine uh, she will when she's ready to. and ready boys are always marvel at their tenderness. Mommy! It's Mommy. all right. It's all right. It's all, oh, it's all right, Bluebird. I'm here. You're safe. I, I thought the bad men got me. Oh, no, darling. It's Uncle Ben. Look. He loves you. Now you're safe and you're loved. Go back to sleep. I can't thank you enough for making us so welcome. Well, you haven't even said how long are you going to stay. Well, I, I don't know, Ben. Well, as a matter of being more comfortable, there's a room right next door you can use as a sitting room. Can we talk about it tomorrow? I'm just so tired. Of course. But just as you told your daughter, you're safe and you're loved. Going out to lunch. Stay half an hour. Right. I think he made a copy of the message he sent to that Mr. Mosner at Fort Baker. And I know darn well he copied this one. Calls himself Brown. Well, Chad, there's an awful lot of Browns, you know. He claims to be a company inspector. He even showed me a letter. But, Sheriff, I've had inspectors come and spend three or four hours, not three days. He's been over everything in that office, some of it twice. That ain't normal, is it? Well, you'd know more about that than I would. Most are. M-O-S-N-A-R is ransom, R-A-N-S-O-M. That's clear. Either that telegrapher at Fort Baker was completely fooled, or he's in with him. Could Ransom have a telegrapher with him to tap the line? Every telegrapher has a style of his own, and this came in the hand of the man at Fort Baker. If it's an imitation, Ransom's got a real good man. And their cleverly coded rendezvous, their Christmas tree. That's somewhere between here and Fort Baker. Yes. And anywhere up to a six-hour ride either side of that telegraph line. Now, we've just got to keep watching and following. Mr. Brown, I'm Sheriff Coffey. Well, what can I do for you, Sheriff? Well, I understand that you're an inspector for the telegraph company, and I'd like to see your credentials. Sheriff Coffey, 
Step in, if you please. How did you find us here? Oh, just asking a few of the right questions, I guess. May I ask your interest in Mr. Brown's activities? I think you've got the shoe on the wrong foot, mister. It's Major Donahue, Provost Marshal's office, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. This is Sergeant Brown, Trooper Tui, Trooper Spence. Welcome to my jurisdiction, gentlemen. Our business in Virginia City is strictly confidential. We're in pursuit of an elusive and dangerous criminal gang, specifically of its leader, a fugitive from federal justice. No such thing around here. If there was, I'd know about it. You know about the Ransom Gang? Yes. Yeah. Arizona, Mexican border? The Ransom Gang is in Nevada, Sheriff. We've intercepted their messages. Sergeant Brown is a specialist. Gee, that's good to know. I... I'd better... Do nothing. I know Cody Ransom. From personal contact. And years of watchful waiting. If he discovers me before I take him, I assure you he is vicious. He will wreak his vengeance on the innocent and the helpless. I've heard a lot of stories about that gang, but... I have federal troops at my disposal should I need them. In the interest of the safety of your people, I ask you officially, Sheriff, to do nothing, say nothing to anyone that would expose my position. You understand? Well, I understand, but why Virginia City? Well, I was going to ask you that question myself. You know the rancher Cartwright. Yes. Is there any question of his loyalty or his obedience to law? You don't think he's mixed up in this, do you? I know he is. I make no charge. He is involved, either as a co-conspirator or as a victim of conspiracy, and potentially of violence. Bluebird! Ben? Hmm? Jamie, have you seen Bluebird? Oh, she's been playing around here all morning, yeah? Bluebird! Find it for me, would you? Would you? Maybe she's around back. I'll look. Bluebird! She can't be far. Here she is. There. Please don't shout. I'm sorry. You know, your mother was calling you. I know. I can hear her. Well, why didn't you answer her? <laughs> That's all right. Darling, it's time to wash up for dinner. Can I take my rabbit? Uh, say what, Bluebird? I think the rabbit wants to stay here with its mother. Look, let's us go in and eat, and then after you get done eating, we'll come and pay him a visit, all right? All right. If you need some help, and I think you do, all you have to do is tell me about it, but you must do that. Ben, for six years, I've been picking up the pieces of the life the war destroyed. Just about got it all back, and you are helping. That's all I can tell you, except that... I've seldom been as happy as I am now. She's not wanted in the state of Nevada. I checked that out just in case. And the way she's been described by a plumber and the station agent, she's a, a woman of quality. Of course she is. Highest quality. Can't figure her being mixed up in any kind of criminal activity. It's ridiculous. Those monkeys just followed her out to Virginia City, and I don't have any doubt in the world but what they followed me right out here. Well, I mentioned my name. That brought you out here, hoping to start some kind of activity. That's about the size of it. Doggone it, Bluebird. Come on. Oh. Doggone it, Bluebird. Now, where are you? Come on. Oh. Ah. Ah. Visitor. Yes, the uh, sheriff. He rode out from town to uh, bring this to you. The sheriff? All this way. There's a man in town, the name of Donahue. Donahue? Yes, Major Donahue. Oh, dear heaven. All right, Rose Beckett or Katie Summers or whoever you are.
Let's get to the truth of it. I'm Cody Ransom's wife. Oh, I see. And why didn't you tell me this before? Why don't you tell me what you know about Cody Ransom's gang? Nothing good. Well, what would you have said if I had written you and asked if I could stay in your home while I waited for a message from its heartless leader? Would have been the truth. I could cope with that. Cody Ransom is not an outlaw. And that is the truth. And he is not the leader of a vicious gang. He's a fugitive, Rose. You know that. Otherwise, there'd be no need for your deception. I use another name because I have to. Technically, he's an outlaw. I'm not married to a technicality, Ben. I know the man. I know him and I love him. Why were you so upset earlier when you couldn't find Bluebird? And who's this bad man she's so afraid of? Major Henry Donahue. You knew he followed you here? Oh, no, Ben. I would never knowingly have brought this on you. I thought I was safe. I, I've lived in dread of Henry Donahue for years. I, I tried to caution Bluebird without making her afraid, but well, she's such a sensitive child. How long is it since you've seen Ransom? A little over six years. And you're so determined to effect a reunion with your husband that you'd expose your daughter to this? Ben, I've taken advantage of you, and it's too late to apologize for that. But don't reproach me with my child. I've had to teach Cody Ransom's daughter never to mention his name, but to know it, because it's an honorable name. I have faith in my husband. I'm not doing this for myself. But Bluebird has a right to know her father. Not what people say he is, not what I say he is. But to know her father. No matter what he's become. Ben, I'd like to show you something. Well, are those the letters of a man who pillages and murders? No, they're the letters of a lonely man who obviously loves you very deeply but they don't disprove his reputation. You won't take my word. The only evidence you have to the contrary are the stories you've heard. How about this telegram? Meet me by the Christmas tree. Where is the Christmas tree? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that, man. Now, Rose, <laughs> it's either me or Donahue. He'll follow you if you go there now. Oh, Ben, it's not your problem. Well, yes, it is, at least in Donahue's mind it is. Are you saying you believe me about Cody? Rose, Cody Ransom doesn't mean a thing to me. You do. I'd have helped you in any case. Oh, Ben. Now, where is the Christmas tree? Do you know a, a crossroads called Liscombe Station? I can find it. Tell me the whole story. Right from the beginning, the whole thing. Well, when the Yankees captured New Orleans in 1862, they made General Butler a military governor. And uh, he started a black market business. Oh, yeah. Well-known story. Well, he was getting very rich, and I, I knew it because of Daddy's bank. So, well, I wrote some letters to Washington, and they tried me and convicted me of sedition. Major Donahue was the provost marshal, and... I was pregnant with Bluebird, and he locked me in a cabin. Cody found out where I was, and... A ransom raided across the river and got Rose out. But uh, Donahue charged him as an enemy agent. He was tried and sentenced to death in absentia. And by the end of the war, Ransom was a colonel of his regiment. But with the conviction hanging over his head, he wasn't about to surrender. He took his men to Mexico. Yeah, Paul, those King Rue court convictions of butlers, will they stand up? Rose thinks the government has some other grievances, too. The whole thing has to be clarified by Sheridan's headquarters in St. Louis. Well, why don't we get word to him? Oh, we will, and to ransom, too. But we have a little problem here. 
Sheriff Coffey is sure the ranch is being watched. They're sending a courier. I'll follow him. You go back into town and tell the Major. Looking for me, friend? Wasn't gonna ask you to drop that, but now you got your hands full, once you let it slide right down on the ground. Come on, drop it. Now you and I can ride to Carson together. Me up from my nap. I'm sorry, it's bad timing, I guess. I've mm. come a long way. Mm. You may be able to help me. I've got a letter here. The Cody Ransom. Mm. Ransom, huh? Hey. Hey, one of you name Ransom? Felon here, he's got a, a letter for a Cody Ransom. He ain't here. Whiskey's dollar a drink. Push my horse. That's twenty dollars. I don't aim to sell him. Just want to stall and some hay. Well, that's ten for the stall, and it's uh, ten for the hay. He'll eat grass. Don't move. I'll see that letter. Please. If you're Ransom, I'm a friend. Friend or a dead man, ain't nobody around here gives a dang. Now show the letter. Slow. Take it out. Stand easy. Detail. Halt. Prepare this man. This man. Sergeant, report and mission accomplished. Appears like you boys made a real good haul today. Well, Sergeant, now you looky here. We got us a big fat chicken. We got taters, onions. Yes, sir, there's even a squash to bake up there for the Colonel. Won't no man go hungry tonight. Sorry, kid. It's purely all we could get. It's all right. I believe you might be able to eat a little squash. You make the entry, will you? Mr. Cartwright. Yes. Rose Beckett once told me you survived the wreck of a ship belonging to her uncle. Yes, sir. The Antelope Packet, 300 tons, off the coast of Cayo de Fuego. Please come in, sir. You don't let on to what you've seen out here, here. What have I seen out here? Isn't this the Ransom Gang? To him, it's the 19th Regiment, Arkansas Mounted Rifles. He's done letters through Hellfire too often to recollect. And we're all of us counting on him to bring us home, understand? 
No, I don't quite understand. He reckons he done brought us up from Mexico to make a formal surrender of the colors and regiment with honors. That's how he keeps his strength up. We help him to pretend. You have something else in mind? Yes, sir. Seeing he gets to that wife and child of his. Mr. Cartwright. I think I can help you with that. That's what I'm here for. I'll talk to the Colonel first, and then we'll discuss a plan. Mr. Cartwright? I'm one of them, yeah. Sergeant Brown, Provost Marshal's office. You step outside, sir, speak to Major Donahue. Well, now, there's only four men down there, Bluebird, and you know how big and strong my brother Hoss is. Yes, he's very strong. Now, well, come here and take a look. See? Nobody's going to get past him. Well, these papers pretty well clear up any question as to who you are and why you're here, but there's one thing missing, Major, a warrant. I'm giving you the opportunity to cooperate, Mr. Cartwright. Return a woman to me that escaped my custody in 1862. You've been watching us all along. I wonder why you're just now making a move. Well, I didn't know until Trooper Tui returned from Carson City this morning the extent to which you people were conspiring. How come you don't just arrest us all, then? I could easily arrest your brother for taking Trooper Tui to Carson City at gunpoint. And if your father's gone to the rendezvous in the woman's place, that makes him accessory to Cody Ransom's crimes and also subject to arrest. Mm -hmm. That is, unless I turn the lady over to you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Major, the route that my little brother takes to Carson City is all on the Ponderosa. And so would any vantage point that you might have used to spy it on this house. What are you implying? I'm not implying anything, I'm telling you. You and your men are all guilty of trespassing. I see. You're determined to defy me. Nope, not at all. You come back here with a warrant, a legal warrant, mind you. I'll be more than happy to cooperate with you. In the meantime, I'll expect you, as an officer and a gentleman, by an act of Congress, to get yourself and your men off of this property and stay off. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, I know. I saw them running. Any news from Joe? Not yet. Did you find the colonel? Is he all right? Yes. I gave him directions to Badger Camp on the South Ranch. He came on ahead. He'll start traveling tonight. We should meet him in the morning. Oh. All right, let's get out. Mrs. Ransom is right behind me. Would you notify the colonel, please? Yes, sir. All in. The chain. This is your father. Mistress. Did you hurt your foot, sir? Yes. Yes, I did. Do come in. That... 
Eddie! I rode my foot once. You did? My goodness, how? Well, I was running and I stepped on a big old stone. And I never go barefoot anymore, do I? Well, hardly ever. Bluebird, open the box at the foot of my bed and see what's right on top. Daddy, what's her name? I don't know. Is it a Mexico name? Do you know about Mexico, Bluebird? I just know that it's far away, and it's where you were. Well, the families where we lived work very hard. Even the children do, and still they're very poor. So the fathers make the playthings for their children. And one of the fathers showed me how to make a little doll out of straw for you. Are you very poor? Bluebird, I am the richest man alive. How did he get wounded? He didn't say. Fever hit him pretty hard right after we crossed that in Nevada. Being out of Arizona and all, we reckon we could stop at this little old ranch and ask for help. It scared the rancher, just the looks of us. He opened fire and we turned tail, but his first shot got the colonel. Ain't but a scratch. But his body ain't got the strength no more for the cussed thing to heal. I could ride and get a doctor, Paul. I think it'd be faster to get a doctor if we went right to Virginia City. That'd be the fastest way to get to Donahue, too. Well, I've already discussed it with the Colonel. But I think you two ought to know what the alternatives could be. Yes, sir, we do. And we're going with them, right to the end. The thing that pleasures me most is how much she reminds me of you. It's like learning what you were like as a baby girl in all those years before I knew you at all. She's everything we wanted, Cody. And you're everything I promised her you'd be. Sick and hunted. You know what I mean? I'm so happy for her. I'm so much happier for myself. Is that too vain and selfish of me? Not as long as you let me share. We'll rest here. I'll take care of you. I'm a very good nurse. I learned from the surgeons in St. Louis and... Please join us. I was about to ask my wife to fetch you. Forgive me, I know the time seems short. Rose, I look at you now and at Bluebird, and I find new strength. And Mr. Cartwright has given me reason for hope I never expected to have. I promised him a decision. I've made it. What is it, Cody? Before he comes after me again, I'm going to Major Donahue. Oh, no. Rose, look at him. He can't go on. I thought you'd be kind enough to let us pretend. No, Rose. We joked about it a little while ago. But I don't want to die a hounded, hunted man. You know that Joseph went on to Carson City? Yes, to see General Sheridan, but... Now, we can't stop Major Donahue. He does have legitimate charges against the Colonel. He has not. Yes, Rose, he has. I've told Mr. Cartwright. We can prevent an act of vengeance. Bill Sheridan's a friend. Governor Blastel's a friend, brother by senators. They're Yankees, Ben. This is their justice. Cody Ransom is Yankee justice. Rose, the child. Can hearing this be any worse than what she's been born hearing? What, Rose? A vain, glorious father who should have Cody. come home? Cody, stop. That's the way it looks now, even to me. Unless I can clear the slate. It's clear to me. Meant to make a home for us in Mexico. Is that all my daughter's to have for me then? My past intentions and failures? We can't let Donahue deprive her. Cody, do you think Henry Donahue cares one whit about Bluebird? Do you, Ben? <sighs> no. Colonel, I'm riding out of Virginia City, but I'd like to borrow your ledger. Oh, yeah, I have it in my tent. It's all right, I'll get it. And, uh, Hoss will lead you on in. 
Look, look under there on the right. You'll find two canvas bags. That's Mexican silver. It's not worth much, but it's all I could salvage out of the last four years. First stop we made when we came up out of Mexico was to try to convert it to money. I wanted to pay our way. We were accused of stealing it. We were set on by a posse. First time in the history of the regiment, we ran. Retreated. Very fast. Now, everything we've taken since is accounted for in our ledger. When Mr. Cartwright returns it to you, I want you to see the payments are made. The names and addresses are all there. Well, isn't that something you should do? I should, but it might not be possible. Excuse me, sir, but it's time to ride. To the commanding officer, Provost Marshal Station, Carson City. Subject, troop assignment. Urgent. The troops I ordered have not reported. If they are not en route, order them forward immediately. Sign my name and send it. Major Donahue, you've been wanting to have a talk with Mr. Ben Cartwright? I certainly have. He'd like for you to come over to my office and have it now. Cartwright? Mr. Major Donahue? Mr. Cartwright. Major. I didn't anticipate a friendly greeting after being ordered off your place by your son. Well, I hope he didn't exceed his rights in any way. He was cordially obstructive. I wished only for him to cooperate. Yes, I believe he suggested the proper warrant. And your younger boy technically did kidnap one of my men. Uh, did you have the uh, warrant? On the other hand, technically, we did trespass. Of course, it's a matter of interpretation. We intended no threat. Do you have the warrant? And you did harbor that woman. Whether you conspired with her is a matter of your intention. Then you don't have the warrant, Major. I haven't applied for it. I preferred your willing assistance. To what end? The apprehension and arrest of Cody Ransom. On what charge, Major? Come now, Cartwright. Ben, he does have a fugitive warrant. I've checked it. And Cody Ransom is wanted in Arizona Territory. Yes. So why don't we sit down, gentlemen? He's wanted on charges of robbery, horse thieving, cattle rustling, attempted murder, Yes, excuse me, here, where? Yes. Carrots, five cents. Squash, ten cents. Half old horse blanket, one dollar. Small spade, uh, flour, sugar, salt. And then you do know where they are. An itemized account of every single item that they've taken since they crossed the Mexican border. But why do they keep these accounts? Because they mean to pay up. With what? They got money, why'd they steal? Every time they show their face, somebody started shooting at them. Yes, Major. I know exactly where they are. I also know they're not the gang of criminals that we've heard about. They mean to make restitution and set the record straight in Arizona. You're guilty of conspiracy. Yes, uh, technically. Where is Cody Ransom? I still haven't heard the charges against him. He was convicted of being an enemy agent in 1862 and sentenced to death. In New Orleans, under General Butler's command. Most of those convictions have been overturned, haven't they, Major? This one stands. Maybe that's only because this one hasn't been reviewed by the proper authorities in Washington. Here you go. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, Major, this is my son, Joseph, the kidnapper. Major? Ah, oh, good. Joseph, why don't you tell the Major why you went to Carson City? I want to try to confirm the story we got from Mrs. Cody Ransom. Or at least slow things down until we can dig out the truth. I have telegrams here from both of our senators and a letter from Governor Blasdell. I anticipated political interference. I've been victimized before. I took the precaution of wiring my commanding officer in Washington. Now, if you care to read the answer, you will find my authority confirmed. To arrest a formal rebel raider who avoided surrender by taking his troops into Mexico. Which surrender, Major? I beg your pardon. Well, as I recall it, Lee surrendered on... April the 9th, uh, Johnson on the 26th, uh, Taylor not until May, and Kirby Smith at the end of May, I believe. Kirby Smith was Ransom's ultimate commander. 
Surrender is commonly synonymous with Appomattox. Kirby Smith did not surrender until May 26th, that is true. But on the 29th of May, on his way to Mexico, Cody Ransom engaged in a battle with federal troops and stole federal goods. Yes, uh, we heard about that. Yeah, I contacted Kirby Smith, Edmund Kirby Smith. He's now chancellor at the uh, University of Nashville. Uh, can I read this way? If it pleases you. A Ransom's regiment on detached service January through May 1865. Probable he did not receive surrender order before Sunday 4, June 65. It's a probable lie. One rebel protecting another. Kirby Smith was a turncoat. A West Point graduate and a turncoat. Why don't we cut to the heart of the matter? Cody Ransom is prepared to face the charges. Now, all he wants to do is surrender his regiment or what's left of it, officially and properly, so that its colors may be retired and his men paroled so that they may return home in peace and safety. Absolutely out of the question. Major, his wife and child are with him. Why don't you receive them with compassion, at least? Receive them? They're on their way here, now, to Virginia City. Sergeant, summon the men, on the double, mounted. Major, you'll answer for any violence you do. Ransom stole that woman from under me. He made a laughing stock of me. I'll talk about restoring him when my place on the promotion roster has been restored. But first, I'll have him on my terms. Forward! Oh! Oh! Stand aside, young man. Major Donahue? Move your man out of my way. Confidential orders for you, sir. Very well. Out of my way. I advise the Major to open those orders. You advise me, you Poppinjay. Make that Lieutenant Poppinjay, sir. Otherwise, Wells. Aide to General Philip Sheridan, Commanding General, Division of the Missouri. Now, I advise the Major to open those orders. Right in with Cody Ransom. I want a clarification of this order. I want to send a wire to St. Louis. I want a personal confirmation from Sheridan himself. If I'm going to be in a court, he... Here, Major, why don't you just write it out yourself? Address the officer in command. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Edward Wells, Headquarters and Headquarters, Division of the Missouri. On detached service, sir. I am Cody Ransom, Colonel Commanding, 19th Arkansas Mounted Rifles. I wish to report the due and directed surrender of the officers, men, and the military equipage of my regiment. Sir, you may keep your sword. I request that the colors and the guidance be preserved. Sir, I have orders here which are to be read aloud to you and your men. With your permission, Mr. Cartwright. These orders are addressed to Lieutenant Wells. In view of its loyal and superior service to the cause of the late Confederate States, the surrender of the 19th Regiment of Arkansas Mounted Rifles 
is to be accepted with honors. Its colors and personal records to be remanded to the safekeeping of one of its paroled officers. In view of his own exemplary service, Colonel Cody F. Ransom is to be received with clemency and held free on his own recognizance. Pending full investigation of the allegations against him. And it's signed by... Yes, sir, I think the top three signatures. Yes. Among 20 some endorsing signatures, Colonel, are those of General W.T. Sherman, General Philip Sheridan, U.S. Grant, Commander-in-Chief. All right. Cody? Cody? See you later, then. Thanks again. Is my daddy going to get well, Uncle Ben? Of course he is, dear. It's going to take a little while, though. He's going to bring back some real good medicine and a friend of his, another doctor, to help him out. I can help out, too. Yes, he's going to need some good nursing and a lot of cheering up. I can tell him I love him. Well, why don't we go upstairs and you can tell him that right now. Yeah. Can I show him my bunny? I think that would be fine. Well, come on, let's go get it. Hush, your mellow, you men. Hopsing cook good food. Come eat. Come eat. We're ready. It's just that our stomach's a bit bulky. <laughs> 